Hello and welcome Pisces to your August 2023 horoscope. My name is Jeff Smith. I'm your professional astrologer here at Raise Your Vibration TV and I am going to be your cosmic guide, if you will, through the energies of the month of August and I'm going to tell you something. It is crazy, crazy. We're going to go over the full moons. Yep, that's right. Full moons, two full moons in August, one at the beginning of the month new moon in the middle of the month, and another one in your sign at the end of the month. So let's first of all go ahead and take a look at retrogrades. We're going to take a look at retrogrades and see where they're going on in your chart. Because at the end of the month, by the time your full moon comes around on the 30th, we are going to have eight planets retrograde. Eight. Eight planets. Ay. <laughs> So let's go ahead and see what they are in your chart for this month, all right? So let's start with Pluto. Pluto is a heavy hitter. It doesn't really affect us personally. What it wants us to do is gain perspective on groups of people who we associate with. Are they friends? Are they not friends? Do I need them at all? You know, but it's working with other people, being able to work with other people too. You know, you got to change your views about that. Then let's switch to your first house. Your first house has to do with how you feel about yourself. And Saturn in Pisces retrograde is weak, but it creates limitations. Expressing yourself, especially in relationships. Are you feeling good about yourself or do you feel there's one frustration after the other? That's asking you to get some perspective on that also. And then your ruler Neptune is in your sign. It's very strong. However, it's retrograde. So you may be believing some beliefs about yourself that are no longer true, you know, and it's time to lift the veil on that. Then we switch here to your self-worth and destiny, and it's, and it's focused on another retrograde planet, Venus, which is in your sixth house, almost touching your seventh house cusp. And that's asking you, Pisces, to use this energy to build up your self-confidence. No one can do that for you. You have to do it yourself. And how you do it? is Mercury, uh, Venus retrograde. A lot of Pisces gain weight during that time. It is a time to be active and not be inactive. It's a time to get things done, change your daily routine. That's going to be the theme for the month for you. Because as the, the sun progresses through Leo, it's asking you to, to change the way that you think about yourself, more self-esteem, changing your routine, getting things done, making the routine and your daily life and work work for you, okay? And you're going to have an excellent opportunity mid-month to go ahead and do that. Could also be a time for Pisces starting relationships, opening themselves up to better relationships. It's 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 a crazy month, but it but it, I'm telling you, there's really no words to describe it. A lot of things are going to be occurring on the world stage. But as the sun moves in, it's going to be making a great, right around the time of the new moon, it's going to be also conjuncting Venus, even though it's retrograde. It's about to come out of retrograde. But new beginnings for yourself. How are you going to handle it? How are you going to take it? Are you going to let your inner self talk stop you from making progress? Or are you going to shut that bitch up and get to work? You know what I'm saying? So the full moons are going to be taking place in your 12th and 1st house. So right out of the gate at the beginning of the month, we have the Aquarius full moon here in your 12th house. Again, this is the beginning of it. Erratic schedule. Can I make this work? You know, I need better ideas of how to be more efficient in life. And then it switches to the first house at the end of the month where it's like it's the give and take between relationships. What am I doing for me? What am I doing for others? How do I relate with others? It could also mean you being open to a relationship if you're single. All right. And then the sixth house is going to be illuminated with that new moon like we were just talking about. This is about changing your routine and, and really stepping into a better sense of who you are. It's a powerful month, but Jesus, it's crazy, volatile. So we're going to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to show you the calendar that I use every time, every month to forecast astrology. And you're looking at that going, what the hell? But it's the... Tracking the plant, the the planets' movements, the aspects that they make to each other, the full and new moons. Okay, it's the movement of the moon because moon rules our emotions. 
the moon moves very fast through the signs. So it usually takes a day or two for the moon to move through signs. So I'm going to walk you through that. But I want you to pay close attention to two things on this calendar. Everything happens on Wednesdays, okay? Everything happens on Wednesdays during August. So I've renamed Wednesdays in August as Wonky Wednesdays because this is when the energy shifts. Every week, every Wednesday, the energy shifts. If it doesn't happen before, it happens on Wednesday. So it's going to be like living in parallel realities. One week is this, then another week is this. Then I mean, it's crazy. It's like cosmic ping pong, and you're observing this going, who the hell, what, you know? So let's, let's get through this. So we had the full moon in Aquarius. That was in nine degrees of Aquarius. In, and it happened in your third house, not your third house, your 12th house of inner dialogue. Got to have a, a different inner dialogue with myself. I got to reinvent the way I talk to myself. And then the moon moves into your sign shortly after that. The weekends, however, in August are going to be beneficial for all signs. So enjoy these weekends while you can, because as soon as we go through Monday and Tuesday, we get a case of the Wednesdays, y'all, and it ain't good. Well, I guess it's all in how you look at it, but there's a lot of things going on. So the weekends, the moon and the sun, the luminaries are shining on each other this weekend. Sunday, eh, I don't feel really motivated to do anything. I don't think Monday is going to change for that either. The moon's going to be in Taurus until the 9th. Oh, my God. Here we go. Another Wednesday. The moon moves into Gemini. And the planet of action, Mars, is square, having tension between Uranus. Pay attention to the news around this time, folks. There's going to be stuff hitting the fan. Shocking news. Oh, it's going to be volatile. Who knows what's going to happen, but you heard it here first. Mercury is making a good trine to Jupiter, so talking about things, feeling things. And then Thursday is another good feel day. If I was going to say a good weekend for you, Pisces, that would be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. On the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, and the 13th. Hope you enjoy that four-day stint, because then we get another wacky Wednesday. So... The moon moves into Cancer on the 11th, and any time the moon moves into a, a fellow water sign, that is harmonious for you. Okay, so remember that. Next time you see that, you'll know that. Oh, that's going to be a good time for me. That energy is going to flow. The moon will also be making the next day on Saturday a trine to Saturn. So that energy flows. No more frustration for a little bit. And then we have a really nice aspect on the 13th between the sun and is conjoining Venus. It's going to be sitting right on top of it from our view. So very, very good weekend there. And then we go through Monday, and then all of a sudden everything turns to shit again. Then, we, again, pay attention to the news on Tuesday the 15th. Big shakeups coming. Big shakeups, one right after the other. And then it gets ready for the new moon in Leo. That's going to be in 23 degrees Leo. That's going to be right on the cusp of your sixth and seventh house. So it's a good time to get a routine going. That's going to be fun. That's going to be taking a leadership role in your life. You know, maybe some of you will be getting a new job or starting a new job at that time. Mars is making a trine now to Uranus. Yeah, that's a new singer. No, Mars is going to be making a trine to Uranus. Remember last week on Wednesday, that week before, it was making a square. So this will all even out. You know what I mean? Then Thursday, you know, the moon makes an opposition to Saturn. You get a little frustrated. But Friday, things start to take action with the moon conjoining Mars. And then the moon moves into Libra. Another good weekend, a balanced weekend. And then the moon makes a sextile to Venus on the 20th. That's excellent. Another good go out and have some fun. And the moon moves into fellow Scorpio water sign. Very good. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you enjoy the weekend because then again, everything turns to shit. So first of all, we got Mercury, Trine, Pluto. Good communication. Powerful communication. But then we have Mars opposite Neptune, your ruler. So... <laughs> This is going to be tough right here, but what it is, is Mars is making you take the veil off. It's like pulling the curtain back from the Wizard of Oz and seeing who actually is running the show. 
big headlines in the news on the 22nd around that time. Then we got another wonky Wednesday. The sun moves into Virgo. It is now Virgo season. Happy birthday, Virgos. But this is Pisces reading, so screw you, Virgos. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And then, the, and then guess what? Just when things couldn't get any crazier, Mercury goes retrograde on the 23rd. And it's going to be retrograde until the 14th. So don't buy any new electronics. Don't buy any major purchases. God, don't buy a car or a house. Don't sign any contracts. Back up your systems. It's time to go back to the drawing board and figure shit out. Okay? Moon moves into Sagittarius on the 24th. Again, another good weekend for you. Mars is, is making a nice harmonious aspect to Pluto, getting things done, more news headlines. And then Friday looks a good time to go out and have some dinner and some drinks. And then the weekend takes on a serious note. This is the last, well, I hope you enjoy Friday because Saturday it gets serious and then Sunday gets really serious. The moon moves into Capricorn, a serious sign, on the 26th. And not only that, Mars, the planet of action, moves into Libra. This is a huge weekend. This is going to be shaking up the system. This is demanding justice and getting it. That's what Mars does when it moves into Libra. The sun is going to be opposite Saturn, so there's going to be some frustration there. The moon moves into Aquarius on the 28th, and then Uranus goes retrograde. It's going to be retrograde all the way to January 27th. And then we finish out the month, if you made it, <laughs> with a full moon in your sign in the first, actually, yeah, in your first house. So this is all about new me. It's a glow up for you. Release some emotions that is happening to you around that time. And get it out. That closes out the month. I'm telling you, Pisces, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I was sweating just from telling you all that stuff. You know, but now you know. And you can be prepared for it. That's what astrology does. That's one of the benefits of it. If it says it may rain, bring an umbrella. You know, it's the same way with the energies going on in August. Pisces, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments how your month is going. I'm rooting for you. And I will see you in September. Oh, my God. I can't believe I'm saying that already. See ya.